At MidAmerican Energy, part of putting power in your hands is helping to keep families safe. That's why MidAmerican provides free educational safety programs to schools, asks you to call 811 before you dig, have annual furnace inspections, and be aware of hazards at home. Mid-American Energy safely delivers electricity and natural gas to us in good times and stormy ones. That's Mid-American Energy. At Mid-American Energy, part of putting power in your hands is helping to keep families safe. That's why Mid-American provides free educational safety programs to schools, asks you to call 811 before you dig, have annual furnace inspections, and be aware of hazards at home. Mid-American Energy electricity and natural gas in good times. And That's Mid-American Energy.
Animal Safety Programs to schools. Ask you to call 811 before you did. Have annual furnace inspections. Be aware of hazards at home. Good American delivers electricity and natural gas to us in good times and stormy ones. That's Mid American Energy. At Mid American Energy, part of putting power in your hands is helping to keep families safe. That's why Mid American provides free educational safety programs to schools. Asks you to call 811 before you dig, have annual furnace inspections, and be aware of hazards at home. Mid American Energy safely delivers electricity and natural gas to us in good times and stormy ones. That's Mid-American Energy. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship. Who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose. Just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Work, play, and everything in between. Stay cool with Carhartt from GNL Clothing. High performance jackets, tees, and shorts. Whatever you do, you'll be more comfortable in Carhartt. Find it all at the Carhartt store inside GNL Clothing. Repeat and referral and word of mouth. That's the main ways we receive our customers now and after being here 10 years, that has just exploded for us. And that's a big area of our business because people like the way they were treated. The customer experience we can provide is second to none and we're committed to it and I'm here to make sure that gets done. Schottenkirk Chevy on the west end of Hickman, Waukee, WaukeeChevy.com. Repeat and believes in competition and good sportsmanship. Who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship. Who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play for the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Why do I look for the seal? It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Why do I look for the seal? In American Energy, part of putting power in your hands is helping to keep families safe. That's why Mid-American provides free educational safety programs to schools. Asks you to call 811 before you dig, have annual furnace inspections, and be aware of hazards at home. Mid-American Energy safely delivers electricity and natural gas to us in good times and stormy ones. That's Mid-American Energy. Harlan Rogers Park, the home of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Softball Tournament. 
It's the first of five semifinal games today here on the Mid-American Energy Iowa High School Girls Sports Network. We are here at Diamond 2, and we get it all started here in Class 4A with a matchup between the Winterset Huskies and the Oskaloosa Indians. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the state softball here in Fort Dodge. Brian Carlisle alongside Zach Carlisle. Welcome to the softball pregame show. Let's start with the uh, these two teams here, Winterset and Oskaloosa. As Winterset comes in 32 and 7 on the season, with the regional tournament they went they beat Newton 8 to 1 and Boone 3 0, and then in their first game they they uh, defeated Sergeant Bluff Luton. For Oskaloosa, 29 and 12 on the season, 7 and 1 or 7 to 1 over Washington in the regional tournament, and then 5 to 1 over Burlington, and then they took care of Mos uh, Mount Pleasant here to get to their. Uh, semifinal game here today. First first meeting for these two teams this season. Have not seen each other, so I'm going to turn it over here to Zach and let him run with these team comparisons. Well, you know, first of all, this is going to be a lot of fun today. I think uh, a couple of teams that uh, are ready to roll this morning and, and ready to, to find a way. We're going to kind of put a piece of this bracket together at a time, and one of these will play in, in tomorrow's championship game. And uh, uh, you know, one versus four. I think this is going to be a lot of. Uh, this is going to be a really good matchup. The one that everybody was looking forward to when these brackets were released. Well, and the inter the interesting side for you and I is we're pretty familiar with these two, um, as you and I've covered many many years for Dallas Center Grimes. In both of these two, Little Hawkeye right. and Raccoon River, DCG was the home for both of those two. So, we've seen Winterset for many many years. Starting to get used to Oskaloosa as they're in, in the uh, Little Hawkeye Conference. But it's going to be an interesting one only from the fact that it, it's nice to see the Central Iowa teams back up here. Oski, you know, they had a huge injury early in the season with their catcher going down, I believe, and she was she was all slated to go, you know, wherever, head somewhere. But winter set not to be outmanned with some of the players that they have. So let's – Let's talk about some of those individuals. Yeah, you talk about uh, this winter set team and, and uh, leading the way, Macy Johnson, that senior at the top there, hitting 545 on the season. We, we were looking at some of these teams last night and, and in our preparation for the state tournament semifinals, and some of these numbers that some of these <laughs> girls are putting up are just insane. You know, a 545 average slugging – or <clears throat> excuse me, slugging over 1,000 and an on-base percentage of up over 600 as well. Uh, the team leader in RBI is at 44. Uh, also good at taking walks, so just flat out a great uh, job of just getting on base. That's Macy Johnson for, for winter set for that top team at 4A. Didn't you and I just kind of went through the sheet and we went, look, she's covered pretty much everything. Yeah, right, she is the leader in every category. I highlighted everything. You know, she's got ten homers. The next closest is uh, five from Allie Pickering, who we're going to expect and see a lot of today. Uh, for uh, winter set, she'll be hitting second in that lineup. So yep. you have those top two hitters at the top of that order, and uh, they set the table very nicely for this Husky squad. If you look over at Oskaloosa and what they have done uh, this season. First of all, their uh, their team pitching staff has a 2.51 ERA, and Alexis Grote, the senior pitcher, a 1.65 ERA. So it's going to be a winter set team who can get on base, score some runs a little bit, and an Oskaloosa pitching that can lock you down. Uh, so I think that's going to be the fun matchup to, that we'll see, and that'll start in the bottom half of the first inning with winter set being the home team. Yeah, and Alexis Grote, 2.55 for the K's on the season, so she does get it by you. I mean, so that right. Winter Set's going to have to manufacture a few runs here and there. You, you know, both teams pretty evenly match when we start looking at statistics. So, you know, it's going to come down to probably the circle with uh, Sophia Stover and Alexis Garut. So this should be a fun matchup, Zach. I am looking forward to this one. Uh, this has been a uh, the softball pregame show. It's semifinal number one here in Class 4A of the 2017 Iowa High School State Softball Tournament, and it's coming up next. Referral and word of mouth. That's the main ways we receive our customers now, and after being here 10 years, that has just exploded for us. And that's a big area of our business because people like the way they were treated. The customer experience we can provide is second to none and we're committed to it. 
and I'm here to make sure that gets done. Schottenkirk Chevy on the west end of Hickman, Waukee, waukeechevy.com. Repeat and referral and word of mouth. That's the main ways we receive our customers now, and after being here 10 years, that has just exploded for us. And that's a big area of our business because people like the way they were treated. Work, play, and everything in between. Stay cool with Carhartt from GNL Clothing. High performance jackets, tees, and shorts. Whatever you do, you'll be more comfortable in Carhartt. Find it all at the Carhartt store inside GNL Clothing. and good sportsmanship who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals but rather the lessons learned for those who understand it's not whether you win or lose just that you give your best so go ahead place them up take the field have fun and play for the experience for the memories for the love of the game shields in american energy Part of putting power in your hands is helping to keep families safe. That's why MidAmerican provides free educational safety programs to schools, asks you to call 811 before you dig, have annual furnace inspections, and be aware of hazards at home. MidAmerican Energy safely delivers electricity and natural gas to us in good times and stormy ones. That's MidAmerican Energy. Trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Why do I to the Mid-American Energy Iowa High School Girls Sports Network as we are getting ready here with game number one, Class 4A, winner set, and Oskaloosa as both teams are uh, heading out towards the line to get starting lineups and coaches. I'm going to turn this over to Zach and let him go ahead and do our starting lineups, and then we'll talk about keys, and we'll be ready for our first pitch here. Zach? Oskaloosa, the <coughs> visitors coming in 30 and 12 on the year. Josie Bunnell is the left fielder and she will lead things off for the Indians. Anna Jones is the center fielder batting second. Ava Vandewall, the first baseman, bats in the third spot. Aubrey Miller is the designated player batting fourth. Taylor Wills is the second baseman in the five spot. Batting sixth is the shortstop Maddie Haynes. The catcher Megan Mormon bats in the number seven spot. Devin Welch is the third baseman batting eighth. And batting ninth for Oskaloosa, Ashley Kindley, the right fielder for head coach Jay Harms and the Oskaloosa Indians. Alexis Groot is the starting pitcher. Miller, the DP, will bat for Groot in the starting lineup. Four winners set and the home team for this Husky lineup out of the Raccoon River Conference. Macy Johnson, the do-everything player for this Husky squad, bats in the leadoff spot, the shortstop. The left fielder is Allie Pickering, batting second. The third hitter is Danny Barker at second base. The starting catcher for the winner set Huskies in batting in the cleanup spot is Emma Loden. Jesse Nicholson is the designated player batting fifth. The sixth hitter is Grace McDonald, who's playing first base today. The third baseman, Mia Olson, bats at the seventh spot. Batting eighth is the center fielder, Natalie Hansen. And the nine hitter is the right fielder, Mariah White. And the DP, Nicholson, hitting for the starting pitcher, Sophie Stover for the winner set Huskies and winner set head coach Steve Corcoran. Steve Corcoran. He is the head coach for this winner set squad and should be a fun day here at Harlan Rogers Park. Absolutely. We have five of them to call for you today. We're going to start in Class 4A. We'll do the second half of the Class 4A bracket with Charles City and Ballard. And then we're going to jump over to 3A. We'll cover the number one team and a huge 41 game or 43 game winning streak, whatever they're up to now, Davenport Assumption. And the one that you and I always get, 
Center point Urbana. We see them in just about every sport. They have some fun players to watch. Second half of that 3A bracket, Albia and Mount Vernon. And then you and I get to do some fun one. I was actually hoping it would work the other way, but it didn't happen that way. I'll get to cover Sigourney as they knocked off Akron uh, Westfield in their first game. And the one that I was hoping for, and, and this is personally just because I went to school there, Bell Plain, but they lost to Clarksville 9-8 on a wild softball game, I guess. So we'll cover Sigourney and Clarksville for our last one up here. So let's talk uh, keys to the game for winter set. And as Zach alluded to, Macy Johnson, key offensive player, begins with her in this thing. She leads it off. She's she's the do-everything for winter set. The other one that you and I have talked about and kind of agreed upon is the pitchers, the Sophia Stover. Start fast, keep Oski off balance, and she's a power pitcher. Just a ton of strikeouts all season. And then Oski, she, they're a very, very young team, three freshmen and one eighth grader in this starting lineup. Is the big game jitters going to be there? I guess we'll see that here as we go. And then obviously in the circle as well, Alexis Groot, senior pitcher. Lean on her for the leadership, and she is a power pitcher as well. So we are ready to go. You and I kind of got that all done. We got the tough part out of the way. Now we get to just call the game. <laughs> now the fun part. Housekeeping taken care of, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But, you know, and we talked last night when you and I was, were putting everything together. You know, two teams that we both know pretty well. I Winter set coming in, and I think the big one was the fact that, you know, they came in, they're the number one team because we had, you know, Benton Community – losing their game, right. which was one of the, the key upsets, obviously. But this team this team's well versed. They know what they they know their thing here. They were runner ups in twenty fifteen, state champs in, in twenty in two thousand eight, and obviously the, the five star five year starter out of uh, Macy Johnson and the top hitter. So you know with her you're gonna have that that leadership in the in the leadoff role. And if Winterset gets onto that start with her, this Oski's got to Oski's got to get past that and see what they can do on the other side. Yeah, you talk about Winterset, and you, you you know there's a lot of the the great individual players, but it's, I think in a, in games like this, a lot of times it comes down to those five, six, seven hitters, or somebody down lower in the lineup that comes up with a big hit late in the game, or something like that, or or a, a nice defensive play to save a run. Who's going to make those types of plays, of plays exactly. in this game, I think, is going to have a well, really nice chance of winning the game. Well, we are ready to roll here. It'll be leading off. Josie Manel, number eight, the left fielder for Oskaloosa, stepping into the, into the box, and here we go. Stover fires. Swing and a miss. Strike one. A first pitch. Throwing and attacking the strike zone. That's that's where you make that's where that's that's where uh, you make your money as a starting pitcher. Bunnell back in. A little off speed. One and one. And I notice right away, Bunnell started back of the box. Now she's all the way up to the front already. She's made her adjustment. So one and one your count here. The pitch. Swing and a fly ball. Getting underneath it, making the catch and falling down, but a great catch by Hanson, the center fielder, for out number one. Wow, I mean, that is just an outstanding play. What a way to, to start the game for your defense. I mean, that is not an easy play to make. That was hit very, very well off the bat of Josie Bunnell, but the speed from Hanson to track that down up against the wall, just an outstanding play. It'll bring up Anna Jones, the center fielder, number one. Batting from the left side here. First pitch low, 1-0. and oh. A swing. Scooped up by the second baseman. Fires across in time. Barker to McDonald. 4-3 to three on the put out. Two down. It's a good start for this winner set defense. Oskaloosa making contact, though. You know, you're, they're swinging the bat early in the, in the, in the count. I think we're going to see a lot of that from yep. this Indian lineup. Ava Vandewall now, number 20, the first baseman. Swing, goes off the foot. Foul ball, 0-1 oh the count here. Stover works quickly, and you, you mentioned that power, but she changes speeds very well uh, for winter set. That'll be a challenge for this Oskaloosa lineup today. The pitch, little ground ball. We're going to have McDonald with two, 4-3 on the putout. Out number three, so that will do it here in the top half of the first. 
winner set will be coming to bat here. It'll be Johnson, Pickering, and Barker. And the, the one thing I noticed right away about uh, Stover, everything stays down in the zone. She doesn't work anything up above your waist there. Now, granted, we're in a different position to look at, but everything stayed fairly low right there. And she, you know, besides the big shot to center, everything else is ground ball. Well, she's your prototypical ground ball pitcher. She's going to stay low. She's not going to make that mistake. Even if she does attack you with a rise ball, it's going to be high enough that you're chasing it instead of hitting it at the you know, chest level to where you can drive the ball uh, to the outfield. So she's, uh, you know, one of those one of those veteran, you know, junior pitchers that, that doesn't make those mistakes. So let's run around the diamond real quick here. We'll go from right there in the circle is uh, Alexis Garut. It'll be Mormon behind the dish. Welch at third. Haynes at short. Wills at second. Vandewall at first. And then left to right. Bunnell in left. Jones in center. And Kinley in right field. So that will get your lineup set defensively for Oski. And leading off here for Winterset, number one, the shortstop, Macy Johnson. And I, in, in, in my eyes, Winterset goes with her. Yeah, you go, we go type of mentality when she can get things started and, and set that table, can, can the lineup put – you know, push her across and, and get her some runs. You know, she she does a great job. She has uh, scored 61 times this year. And why do, right away, Alexis Garud is calling over to Vandewall. Guard the line. Stay by the bag, guard the line. And that first pitch is in there for a strike. 0-1 oh to Johnson. Painting the corner nicely there. Uh, you're going to expect that type of, you know, slap mentality, try to push the ball to the left side. A left-handed batter has that speed out of the box. Uh, to quickly get down the line. Takes that pitch high. One and one, your count now. But Groot can, can limit a lineup. She's been outstanding all season. And that, she did give the offering. So one and two, little rise, little rise ball right there. And Groot's got a one, I mean, just a 1.65 ERA, 22 and seven at her 29 starts this year. She's and been she, outstanding. And the power pitcher with two, yep. Foul ball right there. 255 Ks on the season, not not knowing what she did up here the first game, obviously. But and when it's contact, it's weak contact. Just a 153 opponent batting average she's allowed on the year. Really good power from her right and hand. And the pitch just off the outside edge. All full here, two and two. That's a good take. <laughs> That's a tough take <laughs> from Johnson. <laughs> Yeah, that thing just sat on the line of the batter's box, just off the edge. At two and two here, the uh, time called. Blue called it there. Now, I don't expect her to pull the ball, but if she does, that gap at right center is wide open for her. It'd be extra bases for sure. Yeah, she pokes one over, uh, what, second baseman's head. She's going she's to run for a while. Even a ground ball past second is going to run for a while. There's a swing and a foul ball again. So she's a little battle going on here. She gives you good at-bats. I think that's what you want out of your leadoff. You know, give you a, a quality at-bat. You know, not necessarily for working the pitch count because that doesn't mean quite as much. But it just gives you a good vibe on offense to start the game. A little off speed there. And we've full count three and two here. On Johnson. Let's see how Garut wants to handle. You can see she's being extra careful with this leadoff. It'll be Pickering on deck for winter set. The pitch. And Johnson draws a walk. Well, it's just an that's outstanding just a great, at bat. It's a great at bat. That's, that's as good as it gets. Um, fighting pitches off. And she's fouling, she was fouling them straight back. So she was seeing the ball very well out of the hand. What's interesting uh, is just if, great at bat. If you look over here on and Johnson's, uh, she's not a not a big base dealer. Only three on the season, so we'll see. They must move in on the on the hit and run type of play. Winter set now pickering in, outside takes ball one. My winter set doesn't run. They're, 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 they've only stolen 14 bases as a team. Uh, that's just not in their rep repertoire. They're going to swing the bats. They're going to drive it runs and and do it at the plate. Pitch from Groot, swing and a miss from Pickering. One and one, your count here. Nobody out, bottom half of the first. Johnson on first base here for winter set. Alexis Groot in the circle here for Oski. 
fakes the bunt and takes the strike. One and two now here on Allie Pickering, the and left she, fielder. She pulled the bat back, so it was still a called strike. There's a nice location from Groot. I don't know if they were looking to, to move Johnson there on the run. She didn't get in. A swing and a miss. Drop third. That put her automatically out here for out number one on the strikeout from Pickering. So now Groot, one down. Danny Barker, your second baseman, number four here for Winterset, stepping in. So with one down, Johnson on first base. Foul ball straight back. 0-1 your count here now. Barker, Barker had a nice year, 358 average on base percentage of 400. <laughs> and uh, You're doing everything. <laughs> yeah, uh, of her, you know, of her 49 hits. 14 of them extra base hits, so she's producing. Swing and a miss. So Barker quickly down 0-2 here from Groot. And again, now that's great location. Just low in and inside. Can't really get you, your hands on top of that ball. The pitch. And then a quick steal, and she is in there safe, but it will be a strikeout, but a stolen base for Johnson. Two down here now on two strikeouts, and that's going to bring up your catcher, number 25, Emma Loudon. So with Johnson in scoring position, a ground ball should be able to put her across the plate. Takes that first pitch high. Probably a good idea right there. Move her on the, get her on the run. You know the strikeout. Get you obviously two down, but you got her in scoring position now. Yeah, Puts where one swing of the bat could give you the early lead in the game. And there's a ball fouled straight back. One on one, your count here to Loudon. You tend to see that in the postseason. You try to manufacture a little bit more, just because you, the runs are going to be tough to come by with the outstanding pitching that you'll see at the, at this spot uh, in in the year. Obviously, the final four teams in in your class. Overpowered her there with a. Some heat now, one and two. Let's see if Loudon can get something done here for winter set. Pitch from Garut. Little pop up in the infield, and it's caught. And that will be your third out of the inning. So we're going to go to the top half of your second inning. No score here, winter set in Oskaloosa. Well, we figured. <laughs> Girls in the circle. They're going to they're gonna be the ones that battle. It was a nice job by Groot to, to work around that leadoff walk. And, it, and that was just a really good at bat from Johnson, fighting pitches off. I mean, Groot was, was finding the zone and just missed a couple of times. and But she worked right around that leadoff walk and no damage done. And we haven't seen a hit through the first inning, so solid pitching thus far. Yeah, and we know when we looked at the stats, you get – you know, 216 from Stover, 255 power pitchers. <laughs> it's you got to go up there and just what you had said. How do you manufacture? Right. You know, do you go back to the small ball game? You know, get a bunt, get get somebody on, sacrifice them over with another bunt. You know, you got to move them around. But just like Macy did on that one, even though it was a strikeout and two outs, take the base. She stole the base. One little hit. You got to get that one big hit somewhere in there and. Sometimes that's all it takes is that one timely hit because runs are going to be so tough to come by. And, and you know, you, you see these power numbers and these teams putting up huge offensive numbers. Uh, and then when the state tournament runs by or when the playoffs run by or whatever level you're at, uh, that seems to get neutralized a lot because pitching and defense is how you win yeah. uh, at this time of year, no doubt. And we've seen a great defensive uh, play in the very first at bat, which was the the one from uh, that was Natalie Hansen, Hansen. An outstanding play center field uh, for that first out uh, in the top of the first. So we're going to come up here four, five, six hitters here for Oski, as it'll be Aubrey Miller, the designated player, takes the first pitch low for ball one. Waukee's got a one nothing lead over in Class Five A over 
uh, Cedar Rapids Kennedy over in that semifinal. Inside and low, gets away from the catcher, Loudon, but it's 2-0 uh, and oh now. So a good start for, for Waukee. As Dar Danielson is on that call over there on the on Diamond One. Or swing and a foul ball. Two and one now your count. That's that hitter's count, 2-0, swinging away. I mean, she's hitting almost 400 this year, having an outstanding year at the plate. 43 hits and 108 at-bats coming in. Inside off-speed pitch, three and one now here as Stover gets behind here. And this is a, another hitter's pitch with 3-1 count. you got to be looking dead red here. And it is low, and Miller draws a walk. So a good start for Oskaloosa here in the top half of the second. Got to get those leadoff batters aboard. Then you can try to figure out when you want to try to move them over via the bunt or yep. or how you want to play this type of game. But you have to get that leadoff batter on. That's that's the key. And that brings up number 15, your second baseman, Taylor Wills. And she's looking to get it laid down. She does. And it moves the runner over. So a great sacrifice bunt there. Moves Miller to second. One down here in your inning. That'll bring up Maddie Haynes, number 24, your shortstop. So that will not go down as an official at bat. That'll be a sacrifice, and then Miller moves up. So just a really well-placed bunt, too. It had to be, you know, the third baseman Olsen to try to make that play. She did, but it was just really, really laid down perfectly. And that first pitch, ball one here now to Haynes. Looking to break the scoring open here for Oski. Takes that one in there. 2-0. and oh. Yeah, with that leadoff walk, you're going to give yourself a chance to a couple of at-bats here to try to get the run in. That one in there, a called strike. 2-1 and one now. Is your count here on Haynes. Olsen sliding a little bit in here at the third base position. Oh, called time here from Haynes. Haynes can, we'll have a chance here. This is an RBI situation. She's got 26 on the year. Has also walked a team high 19 times. So she's a very patient hitter, and she's worked a 3-1 count yeah. thus far. Yeah, and I was going to say she just worked this one to 3-1, and one, so you can see the patience coming through as well. Here comes the pitch. And that one. <laughs> Called strike. I think she thought that one was just low as well. But the ump says come on back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here, come here. I'm not done yet. <laughs> so full count here, three and two. One out here at the top of the second inning. No score. Winner set and Oskaloosa. And she's gone. As Stover gets the strikeout. Caught looking is Haynes for out number two. How about that battle back from Stover right there? I mean, three one down, three one. You <laughs> have to make the pitch. She made two right in a row, painting corners beautifully. Brings up your catcher, number six, Megan Mormon. First pitch in there, called strike on the inside corner. Stover starting to work both sides of the plate here. A catcher who can hit. That's Mormon right now. I mean, she's done a great job in the seventh spot of this lineup. Big swing and a miss. Does she like that one? A little bit high. <laughs> Quickly and, down 0-2. And, and that's what we were talking about with, with Stover. If She's not going to miss high. She's going to make you swing and, and go expand the zone high with that rise ball. Swing, and that one's going to be a gapper. That will score one. And in at second base with a double is Mormon. And you've got a one nothing game. Well, just a great piece of hitting right there. And they're going to run for Mormon at second base with, uh, yep, Emily Richmond will run at second. Emily Richmond. Wow, just a great piece of hitting. Able to put that into the gap in left center. That pitch was elevated up, but it wasn't elevated enough to be a chase pitch. So she was able to get the barrel of the bat right on it and drive in that run. So Miller scores from second base on that double. Off one bounce to the fence. And now quickly 
Devin Welch is stepping in at 0-1 the count. Inside low, so 1-1 now here on Welch. You have Richmond at second base here running for Mormon. A big hit right there. That's Huge that timely hit. hitting we talked about. Absolutely. Inside and low. And it gets two and you, one. as an offense, off to a good start against a solid pitcher like Stover. So if you give, you know, if you give Groot that lead, then uh, this is going to be a challenge for, for winners. So that's a great start for Oskaloosa. And it relaxes you. <laughs> yeah, it gets you into the ebbs and flows of the game. Big swing. That's just gonna, that's going to drop. Nope. Short stop. Great play by Johnson. I thought that thing had a shot getting down, but Johnson runs over under it for the third out. But not before Oskaloosa puts one on the board on a double from Mormon. Scores Miller. That's the f That was the first hit of this game as well. Uh, just a run on one hit, one left uh, for Oskaloosa that second. But that double by Mormon is the lone hit in this game so far. That's what we're going to see. I mean, we're going to we're not going to see a lot of hits today. But if you can, you know, capitalize on them, just yep. one hit, but you've scored one run off of it. So that's an efficient day so far through through an inning and a half. And, and the thing is, you watch, she got her hands extended, and when she did, that thing, it just shot off the bat. Yeah, you use the power in your favor Absolutely. at that point. You know, you see that a lot from, from guys in baseball who can throw 100 miles an hour, and then you just kind of stick the bat out there and hope that – the power from the pitcher can can help you. And and in that case, the ball was elevated enough to where you could get the barrel of the bat on it and then just let it go. And, yep. and then the ball just, I mean, that thing almost hit the fence in the air. It was, But it wasn't, you know, anything extra powerful for Mormon. She just used the power of Stover in her favor uh, to give her, her team the lead. You bet. So bring it up. Let's, uh, let's talk about Winterset in the lineup here. It'll be Jesse Nicholson, the de uh, designated player, followed by McDonald and Olsen here. As winner set back at it, Garut 1 0 the count now. High on the fastball there. And, and now I, playing with the lead. Let's see what right. now we see what Oski does. I don't know what the percentage is, but Oskaloosa had a leadoff walk that came around to score. So often that That's, works out. I don't know the numbers, I, but. I got to tell you, it's over 50%. It's got to be. be. It's got to be high. I mean, yeah, I, bet, I bet it's at least 70% of the time. 1 and 1 on a. On a strike, so now we've got the swing, foul ball right back, straight back. It'll be one and two now. Garut already gets ahead, working ahead. Even even the best pitchers, those leadoff walks can come around to get you, and it's such a challenge in that situation. So Garut, see if she can work ahead here. She does. Gets the swing and a miss from from Nicholson for out number one. Third strikeout already for Groot. She's been outstanding. All of them have been swings and misses as well. She got Pickering and Barker in the first inning, and then now Nicholson here to start off yeah. the second. She just looks so comfortable in, in the circle. Pitch in there for a cold strike. Attacking. First pitch strikes. Well, and, and go back. As, as many games as you've covered in your lifetime with softball, when you work ahead, <laughs> it's just amazing what you can do after that. Oh, yeah. You know, you get 0-2, 0-1. You can pretty much just throw what your whole arsenal there. So a ground out from McDonald to first baseman Vandewall, unassisted, for two outs here in the inning here. And that will be a Mia Olsen, the third baseman, number three. Takes first pitch, swing and a miss, 0-1 and now. And Groot wasting no time getting right back at the batters. Yeah, when you get that lead, you want to do your best in that bottom half to not give that run right back. Pitch and, uh, in there on a strike, so I mean, quickly 0-2. She's not even letting anybody think twice about getting the base runner right now in this inning. This has been a solid second frame. Inside and low, 1-2. and two. She just does it. Even with her pitches that are inside, they're not missing by much. No. Garut fires just high and inside, two and two now. That didn't miss by much as either. Yeah, and hopefully, and I would assume, you know, she's a, a veteran enough pitcher. She'll learn from that and, you know, learn what the strike zone is as this goes along and adjust. Swing and a miss. Strikes out Olsen as well to end the, the inning. 
One, two, three inning for Garut. So we go to the top of the third. One nothing in favor of Oskaloosa. We're gonna we're gonna go nine one and two hitters here. It'll be Kinley, Bunnell, and Jones. But wow, really, really looks solid on the hill. Both of them, really, for that matter. I mean, one pitch on that double. Obviously, but pretty solid pitching from both schools so far. Yeah, just the one hit. I mean, that's what we've seen. And we've got uh, four strikeouts now for, for Groot through two innings and one strikeout on the other side for Stover. So um, the power pitching. But winner sets lineup is good enough that they're going to give themselves some chances here yes. as this game goes along. So uh, we've got a long way to go, two innings in the books. Yep, as we move to the top of the third, Ashley Kinley, the right fielder, will step in against Stover. Winner sets defense getting set, and we're ready to go top of the third. You got an update for me yet over on field number one? Last time we checked, one nothing Waukee. We'll try to keep you uh, up top. to date on that one as well. As we're just getting started here, Stover fires strike one. First to five on this diamond and first to five over on either Diamond One or Buena Vista, whatever they're calling that one now. There's a swing ground ball to the second baseman, Barker to McDonald. And out number one, four, three in the books. She's had, what, three hit her way so far, so doing a nice job at second base is Barker. They'll bring up top of the lineup, Josie Bunnell, number eight. Yeah, this is a good defensive team. A very good defensive team for winners set. We've seen some nice plays by Barker at second. Obviously, Hanson made the outstanding play in center to start this game as well. So Absolutely. It's a good this defensive squad. Bunnell is the one that did hit that ball in to, to right center. And Hanson, or Jones squeezed that up. I'm sorry, Hanson squeezed that up. 2-0 and now here to Bunnell. Her second at bat, 0 for 1 on the day. Inside, it hits her. And she heads to first base. Well, it's not a leadoff walk, but it's a one-out hit by pitch. So <laughs> it's close enough. It's it, you know, it's <laughs> those are the types of things that Stover is going to want to try to avoid as much as possible in this game. It'll bring up Anna Jones, the center fielder, grounded out her first at bat. She's going to put the ball up, and it is caught by the third baseman Olson. On it, trying to get the sacrifice bunt down, wasn't in it, wasn't able to. Two down here in the inning. That's going to bring up Ava Vandewall. Grounded out to the second baseman as well. Her first at bat. That's a big second out where the runner stays at first for Stover. You don't want to put that runner in scoring position again where one swing can can make this a 2 nothing game. So Vandewall ready to go. Stover fires. She did offer 0-1 oh the count here on Vandewall. That pitch so hard to lay off of. <laughs> It looks so good coming down there as she is. It just, this one is outside. It's one and one, but a stolen base by Bunnell moves her to second base now. And it's a one-one count here. That ball got away from Loudon as she was trying to transfer. One, one nothing your score. Oskaloosa leads winner set here, top of the third, putting some more pressure on with a runner at second with two outs in the inning. Vandewall, short little hit, just a number off the bat, squeezed up by Olsen over to McDonald for out number three. That's a tougher play than it looks. Uh, she made that, Olsen made that look easy, but with, with a left-handed batter, you've got to scoop and throw almost all in one motion. Uh, able to make that look easy, but uh, definitely not an easy play. So no runs on no hits there, but still one nothing your score as Groot hops back in the circle for Oski. And we're going to bring up here for winter set, it'll be the 8-9-1 hitters, Hanson White followed by Johnson as we go to the bottom of the third. Still one nothing on the other side of the diamond as we just got uh, word on that one. Waukee leading Cedar Rapids Kennedy. So let's look here. Natalie Hansen. So it's the 891 hitters for winter set and Groot is in a, is in a groove, uh, if you will. Um, she's pitching well and 
the power so far, working four strikeouts through the first two innings, really keeping winter set off balance. Uh, if it wasn't for the the leadoff walk in the first, she would be probably uh, yeah. having having a one two three uh, one two three one, two, type three of thing. Inning. And sh so far, she's got four strikeouts, like you said, uh, two per inning, and she's going to work. Big swing and a miss by Natalie Hansen, hitting two twenty on the season, the center fielder. You know, it, it's you know we can say it, but it's tough to be patient at the plate. <laughs> Way easier said than done. Especially with these two pitchers. There's an inside. It's one and one now here on Hanson. Well, and you just don't get the chance to be that patient because they just attack the zone. They, they don't. If you take it, it's going to be a strike. So they, they force you to swing the bat because they don't miss very often. Just off the outside corner. Two and one now here on Hanson. Mariah, Mar Mariah White will follow Hanson here. Eight, nine, one hitters for winter set. Swing and a miss, foul ball straight back. Evens it up at two and two here. Hanson went one for two uh, in that win over Sergeant Bluff Luton in the quarterfinals. They won that one five to two. They had a four run first inning to set Whew. the tone against Sergeant Bluff Luton. That's definitely setting the tone quickly. To win at five two. And a big swing and a miss. There's strikeout number number five. They're out number one here in the bottom of the third. It'll bring up Mariah, Mariah White, hitting 188 on the season, the right fielder, number 18. Let's we'll see if the bottom half can get something done here for winter set. There's the first pitch low for ball one. But Garut really has not let them do much. The pitch in there for a strike, one and one. I don't think the count's gotten to two and zero yet. I, it's been one and zero. She's been one and zero a few times, but she's always come back with a strike to just keep hitters off balance. Foul ball straight back. One and two quickly ahead here. One out in the inning. One nothing your score. Oski on a uh, one a double from Mormon scored Miller in the top half of the second. And that's where we are currently right now. There's a pitch that's high. Two and two, your count. Pitch coming from Garut. White swing and a miss. Four out, number two. There's six strikeouts on the day so far. I mean, this is, this is impressive. This is something special that, that Garut has done so far. Six of the potential eight outs so far are strikeouts. strikeouts. And we're right back to the top of the order now. Macy Johnson stepping in, hit 545 on the season, drew a great walk her first at bat, takes the first pitch in there, call strike. And just what you said, right back, right right, right away, right at getting ahead. Yeah, pound the zone. It puts you ahead in the count. And then you can work whatever you want off of that fastball. And she takes something off of that one. Just it is called strike on the outside edge. Late call. Oh and two. It was late call. But the right call, I think. I think that was right there. Now Johnson quickly down 0 and 2. Let's see how she battles here with Garut. Let's that one go. It's high for ball one. Great idea. And when you get ahead 0 and 2, you can afford to miss where you want and try to get that chase. Kind of waste one if you have to. Right. One and two, pitch. There's a swing, foul ball into the winner set side. Nice play by a fan. <laughs> <laughs> nice catch in the stands over there. Barehanded play. Sign her up, coach. Absolutely. So we'll go. We'll stay at one and two. Two down here in the inning as we're working the bottom half of the third. Just getting started here on today. And here comes the pitch from Garut. Swing and a miss. Strike three. That'll end the inning here. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here to get ready for inning number four. At MidAmerican Energy, part of putting power in your hands is helping to keep families safe. That's why MidAmerican provides free educational safety programs to schools, asks you to call 811 before you dig, have annual furnace inspections, 
and be aware of hazards at home. Mid-American Energy safely delivers electricity and natural gas to us in good times and stormy ones. That's Mid-American Energy. Welcome back to the Mid-American Energy Iowa High School Girls Sports Network where we are at Diamond 2, Zach Carlisle alongside me, Brian Carlisle here, as we are heading to the top of the fourth here in Class 4A, game number one, winner set in Oskaloosa. Oski right now owns a 1-0 lead as uh, a double from Mormon scored Miller back in the top of the second. Other than that, it's been a pitcher's duel. Yeah, I mean, it's been outstanding. I mean, you talk about, uh, you, you talk about what Alexis Groot has done, and she just, if anything else, just to try to get Groot to pay attention to something else, you know, on base. So gives yourself a chance here in this in this fourth. That brings up Emma Loudon, and she turns on one for a base hit. And quickly, Winterset's got things rolling here with one out. First and second, back-to-back -back singles by Loudon to left field. That was a great, great piece of hitting by both of them here. That changes things a little it bit. It really now. does now. Winterset a, has a chance here. It's going to bring up your designated. Well, we're going to have a runner here for Loudon. That's going to be number two. Two for Winterset. Ainsley Gerwell. Ainsley Gerwell will now be running. It gets you speed on the bases. Anything in the gap in the outfield will probably give Winterset the lead. Um, Scoot around the bases like you think all she's of going sudden, to. All of a sudden now with Nicholson coming up, back-to-back -back hits. Does that, you know, fluster Groot at all? I don't think it will, but you never know. Outside for ball one. As this will be... Jesse Nicholson, a strikeout victim, her first time up. Hitting 226 on the season is the young lady. But a big spot here with one down. Groot fires in there. Called strike. Yep. One and one. And just like you've talked about, every at bat for winter set, Groot's been 1 0, but she's come back with that big strike. Just right. And she did it here again. The pitch outside for a ball, two and one. Well, she's not going to back down, though. That's that's one thing. You know, she's a fighter herself, so she's going to give her give it everything she has to try to work her way out of this jam. Her first time ha having to face any noise, really, uh, against this Husky lineup. Big swing and a miss right there from Nicholson. So you've got a s two and two, one down. This is the big spot where you definitely got to put a bat on the ball. You don't want to take the strikeout here. It's it's just it's so demoralizing. If for anything you. else, you just have to put the ball in play. It gives yourself a chance. And that pitch is high, and we're going to have a full count here with one out for Nicholson. Two hits here in the inning by Winterset, trying to see if they can get this thing knotted. There's a swing and a strikeout for. Nicholson, that's a big out for Garut. And that's going to bring up Grace McDonald, your first baseman. Number 11 here, grounded out unassisted to the first baseman, Vandewall, her first at bat. And, and so still a big spot here, though. Yes, but so now Winter says putting that pressure on himself where you have to get that base hit. Yes, swing and a miss to get McDonald. that run in. So Garut trying to battle through back to back singles. On back-to-back -back pitches. Yes, yeah, two pitches, two singles. It's pretty good stuff. And a big swing and a miss, and she's the one strike away from getting out of the inning. As Groot ready to step in. Fires. Foul ball straight back right in on the fingers. 0-2 oh your count here to McDonald. 15 RBIs on the season. Batting 275 on the season. Looking for RBI 16 and 17. This would be big. And I don't think she's going to get the opportunity. Caught looking for a strikeout to end the inning. Two hits, though. No runs, two hits. No errors, two left on for Winterset. Had their chance. 
but still down one nothing as we move to the top of the fifth. One nothing, Oskaloosa and Zach. I, I, you know, watching this thing as it's unfolding, and you and I, you were talking, kind of alluding to it. Groot was in such a great groove there. All of a sudden, two hits kind of changed a little bit, but she was able to get through it. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't break her down at all. She just came right back and got two more strikeouts. She's up to ten. I mean, that that's just kind of crazy to think about that you have 12 potential outs through four innings 10 of them have been strikeouts for Groot so she's been able to come back very nicely uh, that was her first uh, punch out from the looking variety uh, to get McDonald but you get two hits on back-to-back -back pitches you strike out the next two no no damage done the other side that it you, let's flip it back to winter set for a second though it does flip your lineup now though because you will see Macy earlier you're going to see the top of your lineup quicker than than going through and not until the seventh. You're now going to see yeah. him in the s probably the sixth at the Even worst. Even if you go one, two, three, and the fifth, you'll get you'll get the top of your order up there for that sixth inning. But and you that is, I mean, the the problem though is you're not going to get a lot of chances Absolutely. against Root. And when you have those chances, you have to try to capitalize. They weren't able to do so. So Stover's going back to work. First first pitch in there to Megan Mormon is a strike. A double, the only ribby of the game so far is from this young lady out when she hit the uh, double out to left center. And basically right now that's their only hit for Oskaloosa. They made Winter it has got two. Oh, and two quickly here on Mormon. It'll be Mormon, Welsh, and Kinley. Eight, nine, or seven, eight, and nine hitters here for Oskaloosa. Top half of the fifth inning. Big swing and a miss. Strikeout. One down in the inning. So quickly, Stover gets ahead, works ahead, finishes off Mormon, and we'll move to Devin Welsh, the third baseman, number 22. Second strikeout for Stover. Nice pitching there to the, use that off speed on the outside and get that swing and miss. Flew out to Johnson, her first at bat, right behind third base line, or right behind the third baseman. For out number three back in the second inning. Quickly ahead again is Stover. One and oh, or oh and one the count here to uh, to uh, Welsh. Comes the pitch in there quickly. Oh and two and Stover wasting no time getting ahead. That's what you have to do. She uh, knows that her offense is struggling, so that kind of puts a little bit more pressure on her to make sure she keeps Oscaloosa off the board herself. Swing and a miss. Back-to-back -back K's for Stover. She's living up to that challenge, no <laughs> doubt about it. You know, she's not wasting any time either. Both of these girls, what I really like, this is a quick-moving game. Both of these pitchers don't waste a lot of time in the circle. They get on the, they get on the rubber, they're going. Well, it's all about rhythm. It's all about timing, and, and you want to control the tempo of the game as a pitcher. As a batter, you also want to try to, you know, control yep. that yourself. So that's where, you, you know, if somebody tries to call time or – you know, something to that effect. But the pitchers have really been in command, and, and they've done what they needed to do. Ashley Kinley stepping in. The number nine hitter takes that pitch in there for a strike. One and one the count on her. Two outs here in the top of the fifth as Oskaloosa's at bat currently. We're moving along here. Good, good looking off-speed pitch from Stover. One and two now. Two outs here in the top of the fifth. Winter set trying to get the... Uh, Get this last out, get back in and hit. High on the rise ball. Two and two now to Kinley. Yeah, Deuce is wild on the, the Absolutely, all over the board. Two, two and two. <laughs> Haven't got to say that yet today. Yeah. I think I missed one. I think there was <laughs> one earlier. Two hits for Oscar Luce as well. There you go. There's a swing, a little pop up. We're going to see if she's got room, and she does. <laughs> Loud and makes the catch. There's an. For those of you not familiar with this diamond, there is a really a lot of extra room as you get closer to this backstop. Hard for you to see here from our view, but there's it's, a lot of space. It's in. interesting. The dugouts almost stick out at that point because then there's that extra room, as you mentioned, behind home plate, and then it closes off as it goes down the lines a little bit. Yep. A unique park, and uh, as you play here, you get a little bit more familiar with it. And, and when you've been to the state tournament as much as Winterset has nine times in the last 15 years, you get used to these types of parks. Yeah, we talked about it in the pregame. Uh, Winterset was state runner-up in 2015 and state champs back in 2008. But uh, 
They got their hands full here with Oski this this morning, this first game as we get started. Who would, uh, who would have been the 4A champ in 15, 2015 then? Was that a Carlisle? Did Carlisle win? I'm not okay. sure because DCG ran teams. three there, right? They ran um, actually 14, 13, and 12. Indianola would have been 11. I don't know who Actually, might have been 13, 14, and 15 for. No, Paige. Oh, yes, possibly. Thir was it was a 13, 14, 15. We, I, I, we'd have to go look that one up. We're not sure. Yeah. We've got the internet. We might be able Absolutely. to look Absolutely. <laughs> internet knows all. <laughs> all right, winner set stepping in against Groot. It'll be Maya Olson, the third baseman. Swings, fouled straight back to us, hit the net. Our look producer on the camera, Peter, <laughs> that thing was right to him. <laughs> he didn't put his hand up, though. He was worried about his camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and won the count here as we go to the bottom half of your fifth inning. Now we're starting to get into that little crunch time, if your winner said. That takes quickly 0-2 oh now here. And if you're a Groot, you're at the bottom half of the lineup. You want to get through the bottom half of your lineup right here. Yeah, because you know the top half's coming up, so you don't want that to... Swing and another one straight inning. back to us. This one hits. That might have went behind the net, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it stays 0-2 here. But you're only looking at, if you're winner set, you're looking at nine more outs. That's all you got. That's what you you, you got to break this game down yeah. into, a, into that version I now. I don't think you want to count them, though. I think that's, I think you just. No, you, you know, don't, but that's where you're at. If you're Groot, I think you just go, let's, let's go one batter at a time. Yep. And let's just. And quickly, Make she's ahead. Work. She's ahead 0 and 2 already here on Olson. Class 5A, Waukee still up one nothing over Cedar Rapids Kennedy over there on Diamond Number One. I was gonna say they got to be getting close to uh, late innings as well over there. They had a half hour start ahead of us, and so also a one nothing game. So it's that's moving right along. Tight games here in early. 5A. All right, so still it's one and two here. Swing. There's foul ball. Out of play, we'll stay again. Uh, Olsen having a really good at bat here mm -hmm. with Garut to start this bottom half of your fifth inning. You gotta find a way if you're if you're Olsen to keep working this count. Winter said would love to have the leadoff batter on. They've only had that happen once, and it was back in the first. And there's a ground ball that's gonna get to the shortstop. Fires across for out number one. Haynes to oh, the wall oh, oh. for out number one. About the stretch. It was a great stretch. Her foot might have come off, and she was able to get it back on the bag. I mean, that was really, really well done by Vandewall. Van so that's quickly one out here in the inning. It's going to bring up Natalie Hansen, your center fielder. That was a tough play, a little slow roller. Just got past Groot, and then Haynes had to come up and, and quickly make it. Nice job by Oskaloosa. And Olsen made that thing tight at first base. The pitch, there's a ground ball back to Groot. She Drops down to knock it down quickly for out number two. And that was a great play by Garut. She actually drugged to, if you're looking at her, she drugged to the right side of the of the uh, mound and had to go back to the left side to knock that ball down. And when she knocks it down, though, she also didn't panic and try to throw it real quick. She knew she had time to, to pick the ball up, make sure she made a nice throw, an easy throw of the first. So quickly two down here in the inning. There's the first pitch to... Mariah White is in there for a called strike. Hitting 188 on the season, the right fielder is. A strikeout victim, her first at bat. The one thing I'm starting to notice, the winner set's starting to get the bat on the ball. Now it's just a matter of can they start getting the runs or getting the hits because strikeout victims are now ground ball victims. Uh, so you're, you're starting to see the, the ball a lot better here. Quickly 0-2 here, though, to White. See if she can get something started here for winner set. Takes that pitch low. Boy, she was watching that thing all the way in. One and two now. If you're just joining us, winner set in Oskaloosa. Oski up one nothing. Got a uh, run scoring double back in the second. There's a swing, ground ball, or foul ball, sorry, foul ball. It'll stay at one and two. Mormon. Her and Garut going to have a little conversation real quick. And that is all the scoring here we've had today so far here. one nothing in favor of Oski. Well, you know you're getting one more game after this, but you definitely want it to be the... <laughs> the offensive juggernaut? Champion. Well, you definitely <laughs> want it to be that championship game, not that consolation third and fourth place. You betcha. So now deuces are wild again. 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. The pitch. There's a swing. That one's going to be a... 
catch by Haynes, and that will end the inning. So a little line out to Haynes. One, two, three inning for Garut. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. We're going to jump now to the top of the sixth inning, and it's becoming crunch time here on Diamond 2, a one nothing score. And it's been a pitcher's battle. Uh, one big hit by Oski with the, the double from Mormon, and that's all you're scoring. Winner set has two hits, has actually out hit Oski with uh, the two hits back in the fourth, just not able to do anything with those. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back here to Diamond 2 to finish this one up. At MidAmerican Energy, part of putting power in your hands is helping to keep families safe. That's why MidAmerican provides free educational safety programs to schools, asks you to call 811 before you dig, have annual furnace inspections, and be aware of hazards at home. MidAmerican Energy safely delivers electricity and natural gas to us in good times and stormy ones. That's Mid-American Energy. Welcome back to the Mid-American Energy Iowa High School Girls Sports Network. As we go to the top of the six, it'll be Josie Bunnell, or Bunnell leading off here, or Bunnell, whichever way we're saying that one. I didn't, didn't quite get that one. How about Bunnell? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all work together up here in the press box. Now. And there's a quick bunt down. Comes up, great play right there by McDonald as she turns and fires to Barkle. Barker for the put out. Nice play by uh, winner set defense. So that goes three to four. Three to four. One down here in the inning. That's going to bring up Anna Jones, your center fielder. 0 for 2 here on the day. We got an equipment timeout here as Olsen was fixing the shoe. We got it all going on over here. So one down here in the top of the sixth. First pitch, there's a ground ball. Great play by Olsen, but it's going to be a foul ball. As it was stayed to the left of the line. Still trying to get an uh, update over there. No, just looking at the, the flag moving for the wind, seeing how that, not much. There's a swing and a miss by Jones, quickly down 0-2 here. I bet the fans would like that wind. Yeah, a little bit. I would think so. It's a little warm over here. 95 degrees almost today. And you're, look, you're looking at winter set with those black uniforms. Boy, oh, there's a nice swing. and a. She's going to work for two. We're going to see if we're going to have a relay. And in with a double is Anna Jones. A great piece of hitting. Just slapped it out over third base. And that is a huge hit for Oski as they're going to try to put more pressure on winter set to see if they can get the run here. It's going to bring up Ava Vandewall, who's 0 for 2, the first baseman. But a nice piece of hitting by Anna Jones right there. Here comes the pitch. In there, called strike, 0 and 1 now quickly on Vandewall. So this is now a couple of times that Oscar Lucas had runner at second with less than two outs to try to score. They were successful the first time. A little slap down as Barker squeezes it up, gets it over to McDonald on the fielder's choice. But that does move Jones to three. Well, it goes 4 3 on the it put does, out. It does on the yeah, put out. Not quite the fielder's choice. No, you weren't going because she weren't going to get her at third anyway. She right. was on. She was off right. on that, that slow roller. If you're going to ground out in that situation, you want to do it to the right side to move that that runner over to third. That's a, that's a you know you and call that a productive out. Absolutely. For so with two outs, and this is probably the biggest at bat for winter set season right here because if Miller's able to put a run up here, it's going to be tough on with Garut, the way she's throwing. And but if you're Stover, you really, really want to make sure that you keep this runner at third. You don't want to get down to nothing for your offense because you know it's been a, a tough going for them to try to even get runners in scoring position, let alone score. Yeah, one on one your count. Great stop back there by, by Loden on the off-speed pitch. It got in the dirt, and she was able to put knock it down and keep it in front of her. Two and one now on Miller. The designated player drew a walk back in the second. Grounded out her last at bat. The pitch, a swing, foul ball out of play. And Olsen giving chase, wasn't able to get to it. But a two and two 
Deuces are wild across the board again here in the top <laughs> of the sixth. Each team with two hits, too. The scoreboard's all full of twos up there. Speaking of two, Waukee has a 2 nothing lead over Cedar Rapids Kennedy. The pitch. Another great stop by Loden. Three and two, full count here on Miller. Well, I tell you what, she's doing some great work behind the plate here for Stover. And she knows her pitcher. You know, she knows exactly where she wants to locate, and she's going to put the ball there, and she knows she needs to make that this one stop. That one inside draws the walk. That doesn't hurt you. you got it a really doesn't. Open. Um, you'll take that. Obviously, you don't want to put a bunch of runners on. The, but. the only thing that that does hurt you in the regards is she's probably going to get second here because they're probably going to give that up without the throw. So it really does put more pressure on if you're going to go second and third here. Yeah, but, at the, but no matter what, you're you're paying attention to the batter. So yes. That's really your only focus at this point. The runner on third is huge because you don't want to get down 2 nothing. but you need to get this batter with two outs in the inning yep. no matter what. So I see if Stover is going to work back to what she knows best and see if she can draw a ground ball somewhere here. But she is quickly ahead 0-1. That pitch is low. One and one, your count here now to loses, Taylor Wills. If she loses Wills here, then you get the pressure because then you'd have the bases would get loaded. But you don't want that. You obviously don't want that to happen in this situation. So you really want to try to get Wills here as best you can. Yep, and a foul ball there by Wills. Quickly down one and two with two outs here, top of the sixth. One nothing score here. Winner set and Oskaloosa doing battle for the first of the 4A semifinals. We will be covering all of 4A, all of 3A, and then a Class 1A to finish up the night up for us. Well, one of these teams is going to face either Charles City or Ballard in the in the championship game tomorrow. So, if, if Winter finds a way, Ballard finds a way, you're going to have a Raccoon River Conference championship. That'd be fun. That's been a really dominant <laughs> conference really all has. season long in Class 4A. They've had a lot of top teams come out and. and and really play good softball all summer. And we're back to our deuces or wild, Zach. Two, 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 two. <laughs> but nothing bigger here for, for Stover. See if she can keep that runner. There's another foul ball down the right field side. And she's good to definitely, uh, Wills is getting her at bat here. That's like two or three for her that she's fouled off. Another pitch coming from Stover here. If you're Wills, you just want to put the ball in play and put see it in, what happens. Force the defense. And she is not able to. As she is. She strikes out to end the inning. And that will do the inning, but not before a one hit. No runs, one hit. Two left on for Oskaloosa. We are going to move to the bottom half of your sixth inning here. And for Garut. You're, you're back to your same thing. You, you're working through this top half here you, with, obviously, you got J Johnson, Pickering, and Barker. You want two, three hitters coming. This is where winter sets probably got to make this their hay. Is, this is their chance right now. You have to find a way, uh, and it starts with their, with their best player, with yep. their best offensive player, Macy Johnson, uh, to try to find a way to, to, to maybe get a leadoff batter aboard somehow. A base hit, a walk. She's going to want to be as patient as she possibly can. Um, the hard part is if you take that first pitch against Groot, you're probably more than likely down 0-1. <laughs> so absolutely. Uh, so maybe it is a strategy to maybe hey, let's see if we can attack this first pitch fastball that we are expecting to get. Right. And see if we can go after it, knowing that she has been pretty much. She's not down ever been 0 and or 2 and 0. That you and I've talked about. Well, Groot she's walked, battled right away. Groot walked the leadoff batter, and that's the only batter we've had. A, we've had a walk. Yep. That was Johnson in the first. So, and other than maybe that, Macy will try to work the count here, but nonetheless, big spot for winter set. We're gonna find out quickly here. There's, yep, looks like she was gonna try to drag bunt. Takes that pitch high for ball one. And I like the strategy. At least putting some put some pressure with the defense from Oski. Make them start forcing it as well. And you got the best player to lead off here for, for winter set now quickly 2 and 0 oh, this is the first time we've seen it the senior doesn't want to go home yet so with the 2 and 0 oh count still one nothing Oskaloosa over winter set here as we are in the bottom of the 6th yeah 3 and 0 oh now and Groot slaps her gloves she knows she didn't want to do that 
Well, this this puts uh, this puts Johnson kind of in the driver's seat on this at bat now. Yeah, she can see uh, two pitches I, I here very easily. I would be shocked if she swings the bat on three zero. I don't see her swinging probably the next two. Yeah, she's going to get the called strike there. So three and one. If you're Groot, you got to find the zone here. And this is a hitter's count now. So if she sees something she likes, she can pull the trigger. And if she doesn't, she is still fine to let to you know. To, to work to 3 2. Pitch. And she draws the walk, and that's a huge walk if you're winner set. That's her second time walking, and just the second walk for Groot in this game. I, You know, it, and we don't. Oh, and we're going to have a quick conference here by Oskaloosa head coach. Yeah, I think Jay Harms just wants to, to talk a, a little strategy, not necessarily to calm the pitcher down or to work for a for a pitching change or anything like that. I think it's just let's see what do we want to do with the leadoff batter on. Obviously, we didn't want the leadoff batter on, but now that that's happened, how do we want to play this defensively? If they bunt, what do we need to do? So Is she, they're just talking strategy. So let's jump to the other side. Now you're Macy Johnson. You're on first base. Might be the time to uh, to, to force it. They've only, they've only swiped 15 all year, but... Um, you know, Pickering hasn't even made contact yet yet in this game. Obviously, that'd make her do. She's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. So, um, well, you could bunt, too. She also had that weird pop-up at third base. That was her really her only contact other than that. She's, it, you know, I don't, I, I'd almost see the bunt here. I could almost, I wouldn't. You'd almost just see this because you got to get her over to tough. second. It's tough. It's tough because you're also giving an out away. Um, see how Winterset plays this thing. Groot fires. First pitch is high. There's five straight, isn't it? Well, I, I well, got to 3-1. No, yeah, 3-1. So she's throwing one strike in there, but she's a well, little know, bit off right now. Missing five of the first six. So if you're winner set, that's one thing you want to do. Not uh, that one. That's I will in there. say when, we, when I was looking back at Oskaloosa's um, extra inning win over Mount Pleasant, Mount Pleasant was able to strike in the seventh to tie the game. So one and one your count here to pick. There's pitch. hope for the Huskies. As she tries to get that bunt down, and she fouls it straight back towards us. So one and two. If your winner's set, you want to bunt, but you, if, you're, if you're pickering, you have to try to bunt for a hit. Um, obviously, if you complete the sacrifice, great, but you got to try to get on base as best you can, too, because if you give outs away against a good pitcher like Root, she'll make it. That she'll come back to hurt you. And she tries to slap it, fouls it straight back or off to the, off to the dugout side. Winter sets dug outside, and it remains at one and two. She's just trying to get anything possible here. Yeah, the, the last Quick thing you want in these spots are strikeouts um, as an off air as a batter. Yeah, so we'll see. You know, you also have that dead dead zones, like in between uh, pitcher and, and second base, if she could be able to get one there. This one hits in the infield. She find it. She didn't. And it doesn't get – it gets down as Welch was not able to find it in the sun. That will go down E5. That is E5, and that was a tough one. That's been the second one that's really – it's been really bothered her at <laughs> – and that one is, is uh, E5. That's uh, what a huge, huge error here for Oski. That's twice now Welch has been battling She's struggled the sun. With it's it. in a tough spot right now. You know, we're just past the 12:30 hour, so um, you know that's a really tough spot to to try to catch it. But yeah, that one was unable to make the play. It bounces off of her glove. That one was easy to tell that it bounced off of her glove that time. A little over an hour we've been at this game right here, and you know, it, I don't think that Suns moved too much in that quick hour. And, and like you said, she struggled twice. The first one could have been the same way, and that was with Pickering as well. So now you could try to. Now you might see the sacrifice. Sacrifice and try to work for a Danny Barker coming up to bat here. Big spot. She had a single her second time. She try, does try to get the bunt down. Yeah, she didn't do that properly, though, mechanically. Didn't lay that down. I think she, I mean, it looked like from our, our perspective, she was trying to bunt for a hit right there. Yeah, instead she of was just get the sacrifice down. She was, you know, running out of the box. Of the box. So she was trying to get that barrel of the bat on the ball. 0-2 oh on her quickly here on Barker. As Groot in a little bit of trouble here for Oski. There's a swing, and that one's going to be a gaffer. 
It's going to get down. You'll get Johnson to score. Pickering's going to come around, and she's looking to score, and she is safe. Two to one in favor of Winterset. Barker on the single. I think that's going to be air. a base hit, and that got past the right fielder, so that'll Single be air. one earned run, one unearned run yep. in that situation. And it also hurts because it moved moved Barker all the way wow. to second. That puts, I mean, that is just huge. Winner set taking advantage. How about Danny Barker, a two-hit day when nobody can seem to get hits off of Groot. She's able to punch one into right center. And what? then, uh, you know, the rest is, is history there with Huge. Johnson scoring and Pickering. I give a lot of credit to Winterset, though, and you know, because they just, just keep it going. That one's a huge, as I foul out here by Loudon to the first baseman as she was trying to get one down. That uh, What I love about that is, is uh, Winterset head coach Steve Corcoran just saying, keep going. He just... There was no stop of Pickering. Just was sending Pickering no matter what. And obviously once the ball got past the right fielder, Kindley, that was an easier send, and Winterset was able to score. We are going to have a pinch hitter here, number 16 for Winterset, and that is that's Madison Burns. So that'll be a, So again, that that RBI. It's an RBI single for Barker, and then the unearned run for Pickering to come around to score yes. on the E nine. Yep. Yeah, a huge turn of events here for Winterset. There's a big swing and a foul ball. Well, Madison's not going to waste any time getting some cuts up here. Burns at 35 at-bats, nine hits on the year, nine RBIs in those limited opportunities as well, hitting 257. 257 on the season for the young lady. Still nobody out for uh, well, one down. Now there's one out, but one out on the they fly did out. all of that scoring with, with, with nobody and out. And there is a How single about up the middle from Burns, and that's going to score from second base, and you've got her caught, and they cannot get her out. She's going to stay put at first now. <laughs> A single and gets another run, and all of a sudden, winner set up three to one here. And how about Burns? I mean, look at this offensive explosion now. And it's only one, it's only two hits in the inning. And, but I'm gonna, the two errors don't help you though. That, no, that's, that, that's that's what's hurting. Um, a big error as third, well. A big, big costly error at third base, obviously for Oscaloosa, but. You know, it's for your guru, you still got to keep firing. You got your, and and honestly, take this inning out, and and Groot was just move, just moseying along, and all of a sudden that base on balls, and you and I've talked about that already, 75, 80 percent. You know, Ainsley Gunwell or or Gerwell will now run for Burns, and I tell you, she just got a huge. How about her tenth <laughs> hit of the season? Standing ovation over that. here for that hit. So, so Burwell's going to pinch run at first. Yes. Burwell's now going to pinch run at first. Grace McDonald will step in. Only one out here in the inning. And that's a, another bunt attempt as it's a fly out to the pitcher for out number two. And they've had they've struggled with their bunt attempts, but if they're just swinging the bats, <laughs> they're doing well here. I'd almost just say, you know what, let's hey, quit, just let's swing just away. Swing. And you're going to see that now here. So that's going to be uh, Maya Olson, number three, the third baseman. Stepping in with two down here. And there's the swing and a little pop. And Olsen not able, or Welch not able to get to that one. Heck of an attempt there from the third baseman for Oskaloosa. 0-1 now here to Olsen. But a huge offensive explosion here for Winterset. Three runs in the inning so far. And a runner right now on first base after the single is uh, Gerwell. Crazy how things have just Changed. turned so much for Winterset. Not able to do anything. I mean, a couple of hits, and that was it through five. And all of a sudden, they just, Winterset it just fans know that they're only three outs away. 
So we're sitting at uh, two and one the count here with uh, two down in the inning. Three to one in favor of winter set here. There's a swing foul ball out of play. And we saw, I mean, from Oskaloosa's perspective, you know, Groot was able to, you know, gave up a run in the seventh against um, Mount Pleasant back in that first game here at Fort Dodge. And There's a swing and a drive out of out of play there. Wait, I'll tell you what, it, it's a complete turnaround because you're now seeing Winterset getting on the pitch. Swing well, the bat's pretty you know, good. Hitting, hitting's sit. contagious, and, and confidence in that bats is contagious as well. And There's a pop fly in the infield as Haynes comes over, squeezes it up for out number three, but not before Winterset does the damage here in this inning. They send seven to the plate. They score three on two runs, hits. Two hits, two errors. Two errors and oh, one wow. left on. But that, the damage has been has been done for Winterset as now we are going to move to the top of the seventh. I mean, all of a sudden, perspective completely has changed. And Oskaloosa needs, uh, needs to, to get going here in the seventh. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back to finish this one up here on Diamond One or Diamond Two. It's about trust. Whether I'm buying a car, hiring a contractor, finding a tax preparer, or an honest mechanic, the Better Business Bureau seal means this business meets high standards. When I see the seal, I know I'll get what I pay for. No more taking chances and no more worries. And I feel good about supporting local businesses. My life is so much easier knowing I can always trust BBB accredited businesses. It pays to look for the seal. See for yourself at bbb.org backslash Iowa. Why do I look for... Welcome back to the Mid-American Energy Iowa High School Girls Sports Network as we have had just some wild turn of events here back in the uh, bottom of the six. Winter set now up three to one on four hits, two errors by Oski in the inning. But here we go. It'll be the... Six, seven, eight hitters here. Matty Haynes, Mormon, and Welch coming up in the top of the seventh as Oskaloosa now finds themselves down three to one. First pitch in there from Stover is a strike. So 0 and 1 here to Matty Haynes, who has is an 0 for 2 so far on the day. Takes that one outside, one and one. This is probably where patience has to be the virtue if you're Oskaloosa. You have to see pitches here. Yeah, you need I mean, base runners. Stover's only allowed two hits, so um now Oskaloosa has to have the mindset we need the leadoff batter on and we need to we need to kind of keep that that rolling. And they get that fair ball from Haynes and she is rounding heading to second on a stand up double and a good leadoff to the inning for Oskaloosa. As Haynes turns on a Stover pitch and rips it down the left field line for a double. So now you'll bring up Mormon your catcher who has one of those hits, and she doubled back in the second. This is, I mean, this is really kind of crazy if you look at the box score. Four hits for Winterset, all singles. Three hits for Oskaloosa, all doubles. <laughs> and yet we're sitting and at three, three to one. one. Two, er two errors. Your errors are, are your errors difference hurt. in this game. Absolutely. So and we, had, we were error-free. Ground ball to the right side. They're going to get the out, but that will move Haynes to third base. Down two, though, that, that's not quite as effective. I mean... Guess, get your runner you're over. Get the runner over, but even if this run scores, you still need another one after that. So you're going to need kind of a, a chain of, of hitting here to you come betcha. up. So it's going to bring up number 22, Devin Welch, your third baseman, 0 for 2 on the day. One out here in the inning. And Winterset would lovely, ch absolutely would change an, a uh, given out for a run. That, that this score. run doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. It's the one after that where Winterset will be thinking. You, you need the out. Otherwise, but. Uh, Hardest two outs to get in the Boy, game. Boy, has Stover been good today. <laughs> she really has. We'll look at the, we'll finish up this thing here in a, in a little while, and we'll, we'll break down the numbers for you. There's a swing and a little foul ball. It's going to get out of play. And 0-2 oh and quickly here on Welch. Young lady, see if again, she can stay the, alive that's here. That's the setup of the park. You know, the, the, not a ton of foul ground as you get down the lines. It kind of closes off. And then behind home plate, there's a ton of real estate. Swing and a miss. Strikeout. And quickly, Winterset has got that second out, even with Haynes at third base. And it's going to come up to Ashley Kinley. 
0 for 2 here on the day. Fifth strikeout for Stover. And all of a sudden you can count down, final out, and uh, Oskaloos is down to their last out in the game. And the first pitch swing, foul ball right on top of the dugout for 0-1 now. That one's going to sit there. <laughs> right in the middle. If somebody wants a souvenir, I guess they could. Stover really, <laughs> you know, and, and not even to say Garut hasn't pitched great, but these two have been really, really good to watch. Well, I mean, Groot was just absolutely dominant through five innings, and then Winterset was able to catch up to her in the sixth. Yep. And with a little bit of help from the Oskaloosa defense, you know, a couple of errors in the outfield, but, uh, yep. So you've got a one-on-one -on -one count, two outs here in the inning. Winterset looking to get this one. Big swing and a miss. And Oskaloosa now is down to their final strike. But Stover trying to put the wrap and the finishing touches on this thing here for winter set. Trying to get to the championship game for the Yvette. second time in three years. High and outside on that one. So two and two now. Deuces are wild here. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Winter set. Stover trying to finish it up here. Here comes the pitch. There's a ball that does get out, but Johnson squeezes it up, and there it is. Winterset comes back from a 1-0 uh, deficit to win 3-1 here. And Oskaloosa will finish the season. What are they, 31 or 30? Yeah, 31 and 12. 31 and 13 on the yeah, they would. That's that's their beginning. They would have won the first round game to get to 31, and then the loss. So either way, though, Oskaloosa, great season for them. 30 and 13. For 30 Oskaloosa. and 13. There you go. 30 and 13 for Oskaloosa. Winter set the number one team here in Class 4A as far as the brackets will be moving on to the championship, and that will be played Friday tomorrow at 10. 10 uh, 10-10 start 10. time. So, winner set, a 3-1 to one winner. Well, Zach, let's take a look at this thing real quick, and, and let's start with, with Groot, because it was really it was an interesting turn of events for that young lady. Through five innings, that young lady was just dominant. Sixth inning, the three runs on well, the two errors happened. I'll say this. Uh, managers that I've talked to, coaches that I've always talked to, you, you, the third, the, for a pitcher, the third and fourth times through a lineup are the toughest. The first one, obviously the easiest if they haven't seen you much, and then the second time they adjust a little bit, but you still have the in command because you can always do something different. That third and fourth time through the lineup is always the toughest, and Winterset got that third time through the lineup, and in the leadoff walk, changed the entire outlook of that bottom of the sixth inning for the Huskies. Macy Johnson was able to get the leadoff walk down one to nothing. All of a sudden, Pickering looked more confident. Barker looked more confident. Everybody just looked more confident at the plate. And a little bit of help, too, when Pickering was, a, you know, the big play, I think, to me, was was the pop-up to the third base side. Yeah, that Pickering was fair. able to yep. reach when it dropped off the glove of Welch when she lost it in the sun. And that completely changed the outlook of the inning. And Pickering a lot of credit. She ran that thing out. Because if she doesn't run that thing out knowing she's going to get out, she would have been out. Right, she, she can first, run that out. Job. Johnson has to hesitate because exactly. if that's caught, she's got to get back to first. But she was able to let that, once it dropped, she was able to get uh, over to second base. First and second, nobody out. That's huge for an offense. And then, I mean, how about Barker coming through with her second hit? She goes two for three on a game where it was really tough to get hits off of group. And, and really, the, I mean, the nail probably was the the pinch hit single by Burns who scored that third run. I how mean, what that? a big spot for how her. The young lady that? comes up, no fear, what against a, one of the better pitchers in the state of Iowa. And what she a great puts one up moment the middle for, for a her. Just nine hits coming into the season, or coming into the, that bat. Absolutely. And is able to so. get her 10th hit and her 10th RBI uh, of the year as well uh, to put them up 3-1. to one. That insurance run was huge because when Oskaloosa was able to get a runner at third base in the seventh inning, you can still, you know, kind of relax a little bit and just try to get the at-bat and try to get the out. And that's what Winterset was able to do. 
Well, that'll, uh, that'll do it here for game one. Once again, the final score. Winner set three, Oskaloosa one. For Zach Carlisle and our entire crew, the gang headed by Peter Tarpey. I'm Brian Carlisle saying so long for now. This has been a presentation of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Softball Tournament on the Mid-American Energy Iowa High School Girls Sports Network. Stick around. Game two in Class 4A is coming up next after these messages. Mid-American Energy. Part of putting power in your hands is helping to keep families safe. That's why Mid-American provides free educational safety programs to schools, asks you to call 811 before you dig, have annual furnace inspections, and be aware of hazards at home. Mid-American Energy safely delivers electricity and natural gas to us in good times and stormy ones. That's Mid-American Energy. The customer experience we can provide is second to none, and we're committed to it, and I'm here to make sure that gets done. Schottenkirk Chevy on the west end of Hickman, Waukee, waukeechevy.com. Repeat and referral and word of mouth, that's the main ways we receive our customers now, and after being here 10 years, that has just exploded for us, and that's a big area of our business because people like the way they were treated. Customer experience we can provide is second to none, and we're committed to it, and I'm here to make sure that gets done. Schottenkirk Chevy on the west end of Hickman, Waukee, waukeechevy.com. Repeat and refer. Work, play, and everything in between. Stay cool with Carhartt from GNL Clothing. High performance jackets, tees, and shorts. Whatever you do, you'll be more comfortable in Carhartt. Find it all at the Carhartt store inside g and Clothing. g and Clothing, your size, your style.